All right, welcome back. In this video, we'll be looking at um, multiplexers again. We started with our two to one multiplexer. We said that uh, for two inputs, we would need one signal line or signal. Um, so we raise our binary possibilities, zero and one, to the number of signal wires to equal the number of inputs that we want to be able to multiplex. Um, and once again, our multiplexer, we're deciding which of the inputs to show on the output. Um, this is the truth table we had for our two to one multiplexer, and we were able to simplify that down to uh, this formula, not SD0, SD1. And, um, and then we had our test circuit here uh, for displaying that. So for a four to one multiplexer, we know we want four inputs. So we need to figure out how many signals we need. So obviously two raised to the two would equal four. And here we can see our truth table now for a four to one multiplexer. Now we're showing the truth table in a little bit different fashion now. Uh, here we're showing our two signals, our S0 and S1, but for our output, we're just showing the input, D0, D1, D2, and D3. And we'll see that based off of the combination of signals, whatever that input is, is what we're going to see on the output. So here we see the beginning layout of our 4 to 1 multiplexer. We have our first input D0, and we have our two signals, S0 and S1. And we note that as long as they're both 0, we, will see, we should see on our output whatever is the input on D0. So notice the inversion of these um, S0 and S1 through these NOT gates make those a one or on or set. Whereas right now our D0 is not set or not on, so we're getting a zero on the output. If we set it to a one, then we see we're getting a one. Now if we change these to any other values, then we will not see that output. As we add in more inputs, here we've added D1 as an input, and we've added an, a three input AND gate for it. Notice, following the truth table for D1, we have not S1, so not S1, and then S1, S0. So we have a line now coming up out of S0. So right now, the input we're seeing, since we have 0, 0, is the input from D0, is what we're seeing on the output. And notice we have our OR gate here for our sum of products. If we change to D1, we're not going to see that input unless we set D S0 to a 1. And now we see that this gate is, an, is turned on to allow the input from D1 to show up on the output. If we make that a zero, that's the input we're seeing on the output. If we make it a one, that's the input we see on the output. To configure input D2, we have a new AND gate, three input AND gate, that we've connected D2 to, and then our our sum of products or has grown to three inputs going to our output. So if we just look at our truth table here, it says S1. So we bring S1 up. And then not S0. So we connect S0 to the not line. And now if we set S1 on, we can now get the D2 input on the output. Notice our D1 doesn't change it and our D0 doesn't change it. So for our last input D3, we've added another AND gate. Our OR gate has now become a 4 input. 
and reading across we need S0, S1. So S0 and S1. And with those both set to a 1, we now control the input uh, will be whatever comes in on D3. Now, just one last thing to derive from this is if you look at this truth table, our truth tables are normally set up as a binary counting table. So this is this row is the value 0 in binary, which we see equates to D0. So by setting um, this to the binary equivalent of 0, we get the output of D0 on, uh, on the output. We get the input D0 on the output. Likewise, for 1, the value 1, we get the input from D1 on the output. 2, we're going to get D2 on the output. And then 3, we get D3. All right, so that um, shows a 4 to 1 multiplexer. Um, let's look at what an 8 to 1 multiplexer might look like in our next video. And then we'll see how we can use the, the combinational circuit um, sort of black box to build larger circuits easier.